Okay, so the first uh, classical heresy we're going to talk about is Nestorianism. Uh, Nestorius was a, a theologian, uh, early 5th century, who um, famously denied uh, that Mary was Theotokos. Theotokos, mother of God, right? So if you're familiar with, uh, say, the Roman Catholic um, prayer, the Hail Mary prayer, uh, Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord is with thee, blessed art thou amongst women, blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, holy Mary, mother of God, right? Mother of God. Think about it, that's a weird thing to say, that someone's the mother of God. And the reason the story is denied this, he said that, that you can't call Mary the mother of God because Jesus... Jesus of Nazareth was her son, but but the the second person of the Trinity wasn't. Okay, how is that possible? Well, remember our uh, tripartite antho uh, anthropology. Okay, all right. You got your animal soul. You got your body, your stuff, and then you got rational soul. Well, what Nestorius thought. was that Jesus had two rational souls. So in Jesus' head, there was second person and Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, second person and Jesus of Nazareth. Two, two totally separate beings, one God um, and one a human being sharing uh, the same rational soul space as it were. Now what this means is, it means that Mary wasn't the mother of God, she's the mother of Jesus. She, she mothered this guy, right? But at the moment, maybe of conception or birth or whenever, the Holy Spirit sort of inserts uh, the second person, the Trinity, to kind of cohabit um, Jesus. So you might be wondering, well, does that mean that Jesus had like two voices in his head? Yeah, probably. Uh, it means that, that Jesus, well, and what Nestorius would say is he'd say that um, these two are yoked by a common will. A common will. Meaning that whatever the second person of the Trinity thinks uh, we should do, Jesus agrees. Right? And there's never a moment in all of Jesus' life where the second person is like, let's do X, and Jesus of Nazareth is like, nah, let's do Y. They're fully united in will and purpose. Okay, that seems kind of abstract. Why would anyone care? Well, this is a, a, a problem from Christology, okay? One of the things that we see in Scripture is we see that um, we're being conformed to the image of the invisible God, right? Jesus himself is the image of the invisible God, and by having union with Christ, we are entering into union with divine life. And ultimately, uh, we will be fully united to the divine life. That's um, part of Christian confession that Nestorianism cannot accept. Because look, there's never any uh, genuine union bet between the divine nature and the human nature. Right? Part of what we think is happening in Jesus is that the divine nature is invading um, human nature and purifying and changing it so that we, when we become joined to Christ, we're joined to the righteousness and the life of the Godhead and that it purifies and fixes us. Okay? On the Nestorian view, that never happens. Because look, the divine life never fully infuses a human being. It's present, it's there, but it's never assumed. Uh, it's never, the, the human nature of, of Christ remains completely separate, uh, even if fully in agreement with, even if, never, never is there any intermingling, never is there any sense in which the humanity of Jesus is joined to the divine nature in anything other than assent. Such that Jesus is like, yes, second person of the Trinity, let's do that. Um, now I point this out because this should tell us something about why this is heresy. 
Okay, it's not... You might think that this is heresy because it sort of implies that Jesus is walking around. There's like one guy with two voices in his head, and that's weird. I, I'm not denying that that's weird, and I'm not even denying that that seems kind of monstrous and strange. But that's not why this is a heresy. Okay, This is a heresy, not because it's wrong. There's a lot of people who have lots of wrong opinions about who Jesus was okay, um, and what Jesus was like. What makes this heresy is that it prevents Jesus from being able to save us. If the divine life never fully, if, if the divinity never fully assumes humanity, hum humanity can't be saved. Humanity cannot be divinized. It cannot be purified. The best that we can hope for on this view is that we can be like Jesus and totally agree with God all the time. But we want more than agreement with God. We want the actual life, the purification, the righteousness, all of the goodness of God to... We want to have access to that through Jesus. On Nestorianism, we can't. Because the second person never becomes a human being. So, again, heresy, not because it's weird, but because it means that Christianity is false. Right? The whole message, the gospel message that we can be saved is false. If this is what you think Jesus is like, there's no way that you can be saved. Because nothing has happened in Christ um, that offers any fixing, repair, purification, righteousness for normal human folks. 